titled Galvatron. Welcome back to the Tidy Room Hangar. This is Mike. Today I want to talk to you about Fans Toys Sovereign, their FT16T. This is the toy color variation of their Sovereign figure. Now we've seen this released before in two other color schemes, but now we're going to get it in toy color scheme. We're going to compare this to one of the other, the, the M version. We're going to compare it to the toy version, and then compare it to a few other things. We're going to take a look at this guy. And before I get into it, I did get this to Shosie. Now, I will leave a link down below where you can get yours. I did pre-order this. Yes, I did have to put my $50 down to pre-order it, but it did kind of help when it came time to pay for it. But anyway, let's take a look at Sovereign 16T. All right, so here is the packaging. And so here is something that somebody told me about Fans Toys, and it, it, ever since I heard it, I look at packaging, and it's pretty true, except for Outrider. It's, it's not true for Outrider. But anyway, if this is uh, based off the toy version, you see the actual product, which this is a picture of the actual product. If it's based off of the movie or cartoon or whatever, you're going to see a fantasy artwork kind of thing. So that's interesting and very consistent. So that works. Here is the back, seeing all the different modes and stuff. So pretty cool looking box. Nice to get back to regular packaging, right? Starting out with this guy, we're going to take a quick look at accessories. Obviously, you get the cannon. It's quintessentially Galvatron cannon. We do have a... Is this diecast? I think it's a diecast, yes. Uh, Matrix on a chain. Uh, looks pretty good overall. And I'm trying to get lighting right because these lighter, like white type of characters do a lot of reflecting. All right, getting out here to the rest of these. Let's pan out. And, okay, so Shozi includes these sticker sheets with every purchase now. For, I don't know how long they're going to do it or if it's forever or whatever, but that's really awesome. So after just getting a few figures, I have quite a few sheets, can do the whole whole uh, actual line there. And I don't think they're transparent, but still. Anyway, uh, we've got the other cannon right here, and here's how you transform the cannon. You open up both sides here and here. It's actually harder to do with... You can push this just a little bit to start that one. And then you flip this around. That's a transformation of the cannon. So, um, still cool. Same same as we did before, but uh, it's nice to have them. And the colors are a little bit different on that. So, we also have this giant... Uh, is it artichoke or something? It's a giant blast effect. And yes, it is heavy, and it doesn't really hold in place that well. It's really only for the cannon mode. You could try to use it in bot mode. But his arm doesn't really hold it up, so you could... Do any configuration you want with this, which I'm not going to be doing much with it, but something like that will probably hold in this cannon okay. So you get a, something like this. Now, I'm actually having a little bit of trouble keeping my clear one tabbed into his arm, so that's a bit of a challenge for me. I'm not sure why, but, I mean, you give it some pressure, it'll stay, but you move it around too much, it kind of pops out, and uh, I just don't think I have the problem on the other one using this cannon, so uh, maybe it's just the clear piece. You get this stand, which is really simple to use. You just sort of connect it like this, push it into the rear, and then there's a, I don't know if I'm catching that on camera, right here it can, it tabs in right there, and then it's very effective, very effective stand. And so with that, I'm gonna have to pan up really high, and you can see right there, so. It works very well. Um, I hear it works for your Phoenix also, or whatever. I think you might have to change an adapter or something. I never even tried it with Phoenix. Uh, don't really want to. But anyway, it does look pretty good. Kind of inspired me to do the intro the way I did. I had a whole different thought in my head when I started it. It turned out way different when I was done. But still, uh, good stand, solid. And as you could see from the intro, you can sort of balance Megatron on it. He doesn't fit exactly, but the back tab sort of fits in the back, but the bottom one doesn't. So he sort of fits on it if you want to for whatever reason. Don't put him in too dynamic of poses, though, because because uh, he'd fall off. So take a look at this guy. He's a beautiful figure. I, I don't think he's going to be for everybody. Like, not everybody's going to want the toy aesthetic, but I think it just really is very interesting in the fact that I have the G1. I've had it forever. It's just uh, kind of fun to see it in Masterpiece form. So... With this, there are some things that kind of surprise me about this. And they, they do have a really nice kind of a metallic paint right here on the shoulder pillars or pylon, whatever those are. 
and then uh, metallic right here. We're going to do a side to side comparison too, but uh, some areas are a little bit more painted, like right here. Uh, we have this vac metalized chrome right on this, so you can leave a fingerprint on that. And then we have some paint right down here that looks pretty good. And so going all the way down, when you start looking at this and you start saying, well, why is this silver and why? So when you start doing a comparison side by side with the toy, you're gonna say, man, they, they, they did pretty much every detail of it. Uh, here's the back of them. And of course the mold is clean. So this version is going to be clean also and looks pretty good overall so with this a couple things right out of the box you're gonna have to flip the feet around like untransform it so they protected the feet real well with, it's got like little booties on them that's pretty cool uh the hands you're gonna have to kind of they come all just straight out for some reason and they are tight which is good which is really good that they're tight and so you'll have to kind of pose them or make fists or do something with them and then uh on the back you have to kind of tab all this mess in because it's just flopping around loose which is strange but aside from that i mean it's shipped like 98 percent of the way there you got to do two percent to get him into full robot mode but he looks really good you know once you get the couple of two percent done to him also right out of the box i had trouble with the forearms uh moving they don't moving like this and i had to unscrew these two screws i also unscrewed this i completely disassembled this took it apart and at a certain point I felt it break loose taking it apart the paint had kind of fused on the inside to it had I kept turning it I would have for sure broken it so that I hear that's an issue with a few people's and you know when you manufacture these and the paint I don't know what I don't know the deal I don't know but uh, somehow the paint dried to it and maybe it wasn't all the way cured or something like that when they manufactured I mean they're under a time crunch but, uh, and, and the fact that the tolerances are just so tight on this guy. All right, let's run through this articulation. Head side to side and up and down. And when you see the pillar, uh, piler, whatever that is, the shoulder come undone, it's these lower pieces that, uh, maybe that's a bad design of theirs, but it's not really that big of a deal. Once you get it in a pose you like, you can just squeeze these and they stay, stay. Arms go out to the about there, and then you have the 360 all the way around on a ratchet. Well, kind of a, like a soft little ratchet there. Now you do have a lot going on with this uh, shoulder and shoulder, bicep, and elbow, all that stuff going on. So you can kind of move this however you want to make it look right for your pose. And uh, let's go down just a little bit so it looks a little bit better. So if you want, you independently can move this and keep the, the, the treads where they are, so that works. Double jointed, and then the hands are awesome. They're just really tight, uh, but you get, see, one, two, three points of articulation on each hand. Now they don't splay, but if they splayed, uh, that'd be KFC's department, and they would be a lot loose. They wouldn't be this tight. They wouldn't be this strong. Funny thing is, he doesn't actually hold his weapon. It mounts to the side of his arm. Uh, like this so and you can mount it to either side which is kind of cool like if you want Galvatron to be left-handed today he's left left armed now this one's actually having trouble going in I think it has to do with the paint so anyway uh, I'm not gonna rub off enough paint on that side I don't, I'm not gonna use it all right waist side to side I don't feel an ab crunch I, I think I remember that being an issue no ab crunch but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stress that one now we can go that far to the front this far to the back we do have this thigh swivel and double jointed at the knee and then of course that's all tight you feel how tight that is right and then you just got like a toe use toe toe movement and then of course you got all of this that you can do and you can go down so you got all this and all this so yeah you can get quite a bit of range with this guy and it's comparison time and so looking at these side by side i do want to mention something that you are going to notice more paint apps on this one than we saw on this one so there are differences major differences here which i don't have the matrix displayed on that guy but 
Okay, starting at the top, obviously, pretty much everything that is purple is sort of a kind of a grayish white on this one. It's not pearlescent either, so it's just uh, kind of a gray, which is the color it should be, by the way. And then kind of going down, we see that this is red, or this is not, and then we got paint here, but there's no paint there, so I pointed that out before. Now, this is transparent, uh, clear, but this is vac, uh, not vac, yeah, vac metalized and then painted yellow. So uh, again, when we get to the toy, you're going to see why. And then we get down a little further. Now this is painted here where, where it's just all one uniform color over here. This is a breakup of it. And then getting down, you can see uh, that, that where this is right in here is kind of purple. And then this is silver. Then this is kind of a white and then purple. And then going on down, silver and red and all that. Now the arms are about the same color for the shoulders but then they change for the the hands and the and the forearms all that kind of stuff so pretty similar with uh well it's it's like it's almost like a shattered glass version oddly enough from behind there are way more similarities like exactly the same colors here exactly the same colors here and then down on the back of the legs look very similar except for, you know, the thighs and all that kind of stuff. Just interesting different details. And actually, it, it almost, the treads look real cheap when these have an actual painted tread. I don't know why they didn't go that far. Well, I guess it matches the toy, so. Uh, really interesting. Let's uh, take a look at the toy version. Well, let's compare it with the original 1986 toy. And here he is. So at the top, this, the colors match right here. The face matches. Now, the eyes light up on him. I don't think I've got batteries in them. Uh, I should check that. Uh, that might be a problem. And then the shoulder piece is red versus red. That's a different kind of red. And then these actually have kind of a two-tone to them, which Fansway did not do, and I, did, I, don't, I wouldn't want them to. So, uh, And then we have the same colors right here on the shoulder piece, and then with the forearm piece, getting down to the vac metalized. Vac metalized here and vac metalized there. So that's why they did that. Then we also have the kind of gold yellowish. Then going on further down, uh, you... So they painted the button. The button is painted, which is crazy detail touch fans toys put in. Now you get down to, you've got the purple on the thighs, purple on the thighs. Now this is, I guess, an extra added touch they did, or maybe there was a sticker that should have been applied that whatever kid that had this back in the day forgot to do. Attention to detail, kids. And then we get down here to vac metalized on the knees. And then we go further down, and we kind of got like a gray with this. Now, this lower part's not painted, and I believe it, they, they just went with bare plastic, and it does look a little cheap, but I believe it's just because they are going to rub, parts rub. These parts definitely rub, because they clip together and all that kind of stuff. So, so, I'm pretty sure that it was a smart decision on their behalf to just leave it that color. And then you get down to the feet, and the feet sort of match, in a way really good job matching the original toy and so with that anything you say well why is this that and why does this look like this because that's what the original toy looked like and uh and again i like looking at versus vintage look how far we have come and and how far are we gonna go but man look look at the size scale that is so similar such a similar size scale and oh and again i do want to point out the canon uh this does look a whole lot better then the vintage but the vintage you know it's got its charm but there it is they're almost the same size here he is with quietus uh t no not t is it t and uh, no quietus anyway this is the ko quietus this is the x transpots and and all that good stuff you can kind of see what he looks like how does he blend on your shelf who are you going to display this with do you have a whole toy shelf you're going to put it on that kind of stuff going on there or you know, I was actually going to show him with the actual original G1 versions of these guys, but then he would look like Matthew McConaughey in Days and Confused as an old dude hanging out with some high school kids. All right, so here he is in alt mode, and it looks pretty good. I kind of was wondering if people even wanted to watch this thing get transformed. Uh, I know that it's not the worst transformation in the world, but still not the most fun. But, uh, yeah, there it is. It, so, the same with the regular one. It's just too short. And like, it should have been longer than this, but that's the alt mode. I don't, I'm not going to display an alt mode. I don't put it in alt mode that much, but if you're 
really wanted it to be 100% accurate. It's, it's just a bit short, but you can do a few things. You can you can arc it up, arch it up a bit if you want to. Uh, a lot of things you can do with it right there. And with the transparent and the color scheme, it looks really good, really does sort of match the toy. We're gonna do that comparison here in just a minute. But uh, you do see all of the paint that shines through that we saw in bot mode. So really nothing new paint wise that you're really gonna see. And then uh, a couple things you can articulate it on this if you so choose if you want to have wider stance or a more narrow stance or whatever however you like that it does have wheels and it does roll so that's pretty good it's not very often that you're comparing the original to the g1 and they're about the same size or actually the masterpiece is sm smaller than the g1 so i don't know if you guys remember or have fond memories of this g1 one here i was just confused like why is he so gigantic and why does he have such little articulation but uh, it was still a pretty interesting toy for the time but uh here he is i don't think you could get all the different angles with it like they did and heck i might not even have it transformed right but anyway i haven't transformed it in so long but that's kind of how i remember it looking and it has does it have wheels does it roll too so still pretty interesting homage to the original toy from back in the day so let's get another angle on it real quick and as you can see, like there's got the two-tone there, and I, I still like that better in a way. There are things I like better on this, but, you know, the charm of G1. So if you just wanted to put the blast effect, I think the blast effect is made just for this mode, and it holds it just fine because there's so much more support for it. It's set up. It's just really, in my opinion, the blast effect is not at all for the bot mode. But then again, I think that's why they gave you all the options. You can just rip it apart into different pieces and put, plug it in and make it a little bit lighter and that kind of stuff. But blast effect, uh, where's Starscream? <laughs> all right, so this is my look at the Fans Toys Sovereign T, the toy version. And it does its job. It does what it's supposed to do. It does look, it's painted like the original G1 toy. And with that paint, though, comes some tight, tight tolerances here and there. And some really scary points such as that forearm. But it does look fantastic. It does the job. And it's one of those things that's not be for everyone. I don't see them ever producing it again. So it's either get it now or pay crazy money on secondary market. Or if it's not for you, it's not for you. But it's still kind of cool to look at. And it's kind of fun. It's kind of one of those... Fans Toys one-offs. We're going to get the Astro Train down the road. The Thomas is coming, I think, in December. So, anyway, let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Like and subscribe. Ted here. I'm Hanger. Out. I sure hope YouTube lets you see my intro. <laughs>